Okay. So, Bedru got his son a goat and um, led the goat through the plains and home to a Saudi and milked it and uh, drop by drop with uh, kind of a bunch of grass put it in his son's mouth to suck. It was a slow process feeding his son. Um, but his child survived and um, grew stronger and goat milk's really rich and pretty soon he was a pretty healthy young boy. Um, but he heard the thump thump of his neighbors warning him that the Annette noms were coming. And um, so he pulled like a panel, a false panel from the side of the, the Saudi and the panel looked like uh, dirt uh, off and he put his son in, in the bassinet inside the, the crevice and shoved the goat in there and uh, had the goat in the Saudi and uh, put the panel back and, you know, hopped away from the Anitnams and they were right on his tail because he was the last one to get out of there because he had his son and the goat to hide and this whole scenario repeated itself about two or three times before a better realized that he was going to get killed if he didn't do something so he didn't know what to do so he gathered together uh, another big triangle shaped sack of vegetables and headed off to uh, Plainville, the small human town. Hopped into town. Well, winter's, you know, heading towards its end and spring hasn't really hit yet. And this town's hungry than ever. So, you know, um, Barnum, the shopkeeper, just about knocked everybody over when he saw Obedaru show up with, you know, nuts and dried berries and dried mushrooms. And he's like, oh, thank goodness you're here. He's like, I have a problem. I have a problem. My son. So anyways, he had two problems with his son. One, you know, the whole, he can't hide him from, from predators. And, and secondly, a normal rue baby comes out of the womb hopping. And uh, Obedaru's son, whose name is uh, Dahiru, his legs aren't working. He can't hop yet. And so he has to be carried like a human baby. I mean, he's just frail and he's not moving. Um, from the waist down, he's never never even twitched. And his lower half isn't developing. Uh, his, his upper half is growing and he, he crawls like a human baby and drags his hind legs behind him. And um, so anyways, Obedaru explains his predicament to Barnum and uh, Burnham's like, come with me, come with me. And he shows him the stables. They are horses, these horses don't belong to me. I feed them, I take care of them, and someone pays me every month. These goats, well, the goat herd that owns them is sick. He, he's out and, and he won't be back for a couple months and so I'm taking care of them. I only own like one pig and three chickens myself, all of these other animals, and I don't take care of these either. I pay boys to clean the stalls and feed them. And granted, sometimes I don't think they feed them their whole allotment. They kind of set some of the grain aside and sell it or take it home and boil it and eat it as porridge. But by and large, these animals get pretty well taken care of. You mean you won't eat my son if I leave him here with you? No, no, if you're paying me every month, then we have a bond, we have a contract no matter how hungry things get. I'll eat my chickens before I eat your son. So, Obedaru brings the boy, his son, um, De, Dahiru, to Plainsville. And, um, and Burnham puts him in a stall with some straw. And um, he stays there with his nanny goat, brought the goat too. And uh, they're pretty comfortable. He'll, he'll cuddle right up with his, his goat and the user like a pillow. And um, the stable boys are, you know, feed him extra little bits here and there because uh, he's kind of cute and he's different. They're not used to taking care of grazers. And so he's kind of like the exotic pet. Well, 
one day uh, the stable boys are coming along to to clean the stalls and they have a goat hooked up to a little cart and they they shovel the manure onto the little cart and then pull it out well they they turn around and they're they're gonna go like um, do something else and they start talking and Dahiru he crawls across the floor pulling himself and he pulls himself right up onto the cart that they were using for, for the manure and they come back and they're like what are you doing there he's like ride they're like he talks well, of course I talk he kind of looks at him but he doesn't say he's he's a baby he doesn't really have full language skills yet they just think that's so cute so they're like not now but later we'll come back and get you and take you for a ride. It's like ride, like and they pick him up and, and and set him aside and clean his stall. And sure enough, later they did come and get him with the goat cart. And uh, he's like had a goat since day one. So he like touches the goat on one flank and then the other and talks to it in a strange language and it goes exactly where he wants it to go. And pretty soon he's all over the barnyard looking at everything uh, in his goat cart. And that's where I'm going to leave this one.